Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica and I make videos all about making and selling candles. If you guys are interested in seeing what my Etsy shop looks like or if you wanna see any of my merch designs, you can check out the first links in the description box below. But in today's video, we are gonna be playing around with some new waxes that I've never tried before and blending them together to try to figure out the best way to wick these eight ounce tins. So I have done some playing around with it behind the scenes and I haven't been filming it, but a lot of you guys have been curious based on some of my more recent posts on Instagram and some of my more recent videos on how I am wicking these. So I decided to just make a full video of me testing out different blends and kind of playing around with it now in this video I'm not going to be doing any testing so any burn tests but I will do a follow-up video in about a week or so to let you guys know how these burn tests went with these different wax blends all right so before we get into the formulas and how I'm going to be blending everything I just real quick wanted to go over the waxes that are gonna be used in this video so this is the main wax so this is the new wax from California candle supply it is the CCS number 12 and um, it's very, very soft. It's a very soft wax. Um, it seriously just melts in your hand. This wax is not a all natural soy. It is a blend of soy, vegetable, and paraffin waxes. And as you can see, the melt point is pretty low at um, between 120 to 125 degrees Fahrenheit. So that is where all the issues came in when it came to testing because before I knew it, there was a full melt pool in about 30 minutes on all of my testing that I was trying to do with it in these tins. Um, so that is why we are trying to blend it with some harder waxes to hopefully um, get it a little bit more stable and uh, to have it not burn through as quickly. Um, so we're also going to be using um, TW30 and the melt point on this one is 130 to 135 degrees Fahrenheit. This is very hard like a brick and um, it's actually a tart wax. Um, from California Candle Supply, but you can also use it for candles. So um, I have tried before with blending these, but it didn't work um, the way that I wanted it to, so I'm gonna try other ways today. Um, this one right over here is um, Candle Science's new tart and pillar wax. So it's all soy, and it's called the BW921, uh, and the melt point on this one is 135 degrees Fahrenheit. So I will be honest with you guys and tell you that I'm not entirely sure if you're able to use this in candles or not, but I'm going to test it anyways. Um, I know it's for pillar uh, candles and uh, for tarts, but I don't necessarily know if, if it's for container candles. But again, I'm just going to give it a shot. And then the last one right here is beeswax. So this is white beeswax. I got it from California Candle Supply and um, they had told me when I wanted to blend it with this wax over here to do about 3%. So that is what we are going to be trying out today. And I also want to show you guys just kind of the consistency of all these different waxes. Um, I found it interesting that these two look so similar and the forms that they come in. Um, I know that a lot of waxes come in flake forms, but these little pellets are really cool um, because it's going to melt really fast. And then again, these are all in block form and then that is in a slab form that you know slices like butter, so it's really easy to cut through. Okay, so just kind of an overview of what we're gonna be using for these waxes. So um, for the TW30, that is what is in this little six quart melter. And then the CCS number 12, that's what's in this eight quart melter. So um, the uh, creator and the owner of Soy Light Candles, he actually reached out to me and he wanted to send me a larger melter and not just uh, having the little melter over there so I could see how much I liked this one better. And this one definitely is significantly larger than that one. I was really happy about that because I am going to be experimenting with all these new waxes, so I wanted to make sure that I had um, other melters for it. So we're gonna be using this one um, today for the CCS number 12. So real quick before I get into the math of everything, because again, you guys know how I am with my math and my sheets, um, I will go over everything that I'm going to be blending together and the percents and ratios and all that. But the main reason why I am trying to blend different waxes for these tins is because I actually was able to successfully wick this uh, tin, and, um, but I wicked it with soy tin, which is my wax. But if you guys may or may not know, it is very hard to get now. So 
so I want to be able to expand and have another wax to be able to use. So that's why I'm so adamant about double wicking this is because I was able to double wick it with my Soy 10 blended with a little bit of the TW30 wax and it burns beautifully. So I love the way that it burns. This was after a couple burns and it just burns so cleanly on the sides and I love the way it looks. No hang up, great hot throw. I absolutely love it. So I want to be able to, if I need to switch out the waxes at any time. If I need to use Soy 10, I can use Soy 10. If I need to use CCS 12, I can do that. But the thing about that is that the melt point is significantly lower than that of Soy 10. So that is where all of this blending is coming from. I'm just trying to make a wax that can be hard enough to burn properly and not get full melt pool in 30 minutes. I need, you know, three, three and a half, four hours, somewhere around there would be perfect. So. That is what we are trying to figure out today and that's why I am so adamant about trying to figure out how I can blend all of these different waxes to harden up CCS12 because it is such a soft wax, but I'm very determined to be able to do that. All right, so going through everything right here for you guys, just so you can see, the math on this is gonna be a little bit more um, involved and less simple than a lot of my other videos. Um, so I'm just gonna go over this um, as best as I can. So um, for all of these testers, we're gonna be testing three um, little tins today, we're gonna be making them. And all of them, I'm gonna do 8% fragrance oil because I really wanna start taking down my fragrance oil. I don't believe I need 10% fragrance oil anymore. So we're gonna be doing 8% and all of them are gonna have two eco one wicks. So that is the goal to make it to where we can successfully wick it with two eco ones. Um, so right over here, this is the formula that I use. So the net weight of this 10, so basically the amount of wax and weight that fills up to this little line right here, the weight of that is 170 grams. So what we're trying to find is the amount of wax weight and the amount of fragrance oil weight that equals 170 grams, but where the fragrance oil weight is 8% of the wax weight. That's essentially what we're trying to figure out. So 170 grams divided by 108%. Um, that gives us 157.4. I had somebody get angry at me in my last video because apparently I did my math wrong. Um, but in this example I'm showing you guys, it is exactly 157.4 grams. I don't like decimals. We are going to take it down to 157 grams. So that is the number that we are going to be basing it off of. So 170 minus 157 equals 13 grams. So for all of our blending properties, we are going to be using these numbers right here to figure it all out. So 157 grams for the wax weight, that is the number that we are going to be using. We are always going to have that consistent 100, or I'm sorry, that consistent 13 grams for the fragrance oil. And of course, we're gonna be testing some fall scents, some holiday scents. Um, and I got this sample from um, Candle Science. and I've been wanting to try a cinnamon and vanilla, so I'm interested to try it out. Also because people have been saying that vanilla or cinnamon scents will um, rust it, so that also makes me want to try it to see if it actually is going to be rusting the tens. So right here on the first one, we are going to be doing 152 grams of the CCS 12. That will be 96.8% of the wax weight. And we're gonna do five grams of the beeswax, which will be 3.2% of the wax weight. I had asked um, the guys over at California Candle Supply on how much beeswax I should add to the CCS number 12. He said no more than 3%. And then we're gonna do 13 grams of the pumpkin souffle. The second one, we are gonna be doing 76 grams of the CCS number 12. That's gonna be 48.4% of the total wax weight. 76 grams of the TW30, which is 48.4% of the total wax weight. And then five grams of the beeswax, which is 3.2% of the total wax weight. So I'm going to, be going to be mixing the regular container wax, the tart wax, and the beeswax. I've never done this before. I don't know it's a, if it's a horrible idea. I don't know if it's gonna work terribly, um, but we're gonna find out. And that's what testing is all about, is I'm gonna see how these waxes perform when blended together. And then um, lastly, we're gonna do 13 grams of the cranberry apple marmalade. 
And then the third and final 10 that we are going to be making is we are basically going to be doing a 50-50 split between the CCS number 12 and the BW921. So I just did, I of course just love even numbers, so 79, 78. It's just a gram off. I don't think it's gonna really make a difference. It's very similar in terms of a 50-50 split. And one thing I did wanna to mention to you guys about this wax is that Candle Science actually sent this to me. So they sent this to me for me to try out. So this video is not necessarily a trying out this wax kind of video. It's more of I'm using that wax because it just came in the mail a couple days ago. So I wanted to take full advantage of testing it, throwing it in um, a container candle and seeing how it burns. You never know, it could work really well. It could not work really well. I have no idea how this wax is going to perform in this container candle. It's all just experimental. So I wanted to throw that in there, just letting you know um, that I'm not trying to do this in a terrible way. I'm not trying to say that this is me testing out the wax and if it turns out bad then the wax is bad. No, I definitely want to make some tarts with this wax and I'm really excited because it's an all soy tart wax. So that's really cool. Um, and then again, at the end, just 13 grams of the cinnamon and vanilla fragrance oil. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and wick these jars. So again, I use uh, Eco One Wicks, and these are the smallest in the Eco series um, where you can get it in this length, as far as I know. I know they do have a 0.75 um, gauge, but uh, I believe it's only for tea lights. Um, so we're gonna be using these, and again, I get these at California Candle Supply. I get these at California Candle Supply. I get almost everything at California Candle Supply because they are my local supplier. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do two wicks at the bottom. And while I'm doing this, I'm just gonna tell you guys what happened yesterday. If you guys are not following me over on Instagram, um, you should, it's at Memory Box Candle Co. But I was kind of giving you guys an update on my day. So essentially what happened was I um, had went to California Candle Supply to pick up an order. Typically, I always choose the earliest time spot because they do a curbside pickup. So their curbside pickup, um, you have to pick certain times of the day that you're going to be picking up your order. So I typically will pick 10 o'clock in the morning right when they open or you know anytime between 10 and 11 is whatever's the soonest I will pick. But I waited to the last minute and I placed an order and wanted to pick it up the next day. So I placed an order on Wednesday and I wanted to pick it up yesterday. And I um, had went on there to make my order and the only time spot that they had to be the earliest was at one o'clock. So I thought, okay, that's fine. I'll just go later on in the day. I'll get stuff done in the morning and I'll drive over there in the afternoon. So I left my house at around 1115 because I'm about hour 15, hour and a half away, depending on what traffic looks like. So um, I headed over there, picked up my stuff. Everything was fine. And um, on my way home, the freeway was super packed, uh, a lot of traffic coming home. I live in Southern California, which is uh, traffic central, I believe. Um, it just feels that way because there's always traffic no matter where you go. Um, and on the way of me driving, I saw my hood of my car started steaming. So it was that white steam coming out. And that's happened before and it freaked me out, making me think that my car was gonna explode. But I was over in the fast lane and my car is steaming. And I look and my car is completely overheating. So it's all the way up at like the H, if you guys know like the C and the H, cold and hot. So it was all the way up, it shot up and um, I started freaking out. I was, on, I was on the phone with my sister at the time. Um, on Bluetooth in my car. So I started saying, oh my God, my car's overheating. I need to get over. There's so much traffic. So I'm like making my way over. I luckily was able to get over to the shoulder on the right hand side because my car started bogging out. So I would have completely just broken down on the highway, which is just, oh my God, freaks me out. Um, so luckily I was able to get over and um, I turned off my car right away. Um, freaking out, my sister was calming me down, so that was helpful. Um, but right after I pulled over, my phone beeped at me, and I looked and it said, iPhone is overheating, needs to cool down. And I just felt like I was gonna explode. Like, I felt like, what is going on right now? You know, I can't call my sister, I don't know what to do. Um, my car's overheated on the side of the freeway, 
and I just kind of took a moment. I was actually gonna get out and walk down the freeway to go into the gas station to try to like put my phone in the freezer to, I don't know what I was thinking. I really don't know what I was thinking, but I all I know is I was not, uh, not feeling great yesterday at that time. Very much high anxiety in that moment. So within a couple of minutes, um, I, I had turned off my phone, turned it back on, um, it, it worked. And, but it did feel really, really hot. And I was thinking, you know what, I don't want my I don't want my car to be on the side of the freeway right now. So I turned my car on and I drove it really slow off the freeway. It was driving, it wasn't bogging out, it was fine. I drove it off the freeway and um, I had went on the side of the gas station and um, I parked underneath, like on one of the one of the pumps underneath the hood. Um, I opened up the hood of my car and it was burning, burning hot, super hot. And uh, basically what ended up happening was, um, it, my car has been having issues where the fan won't turn on, so it's not cooling down my car. So if I ever try to turn on the AC, it ends up just overheating my car and it just it just wasn't great and then on top and to top it all off my boyfriend uh, drove to come and help me and uh, there was so much traffic that we lived 45 minutes away and it took him three hours to get to me so I was sitting in the gas station in my car um, my phone was only at 50% when that happened so I was just trying to use as little amount of phone battery as possible so I was just sitting there in my car just thinking oh my gosh this is what am I doing right now? So it felt like a waste of a day because I was seriously just out and about. I was able to get my wax, so I guess that's all that matters, but I'm very appreciative that my boyfriend was able to come and help me because yesterday was definitely a day. It was definitely one of those days. All right, so this is the setup I came up with in order to be able to use these Presto Pots with the spout already attached to them. So um, what I did was I just have my trash can, I have a cutting board, and it puts it right on uh, a good height to be able to um, use the spout to um, get the wax out and put it into the pitcher. So this is my little setup. I know that you guys won't be able to see in the next clip, but this is what it looks like when I'm pouring it out. Okay, so the first candle that we are going to be making is the pumpkin souffle one. So that is the mixture of just the CCS number 12 with the 3.2% beeswax. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be measuring the beeswax the same way that I do the fragrance oil on the little gram scale because it's only five grams. So I wanna make sure that I'm as accurate as possible. Also to be honest, you guys, I've never worked with beeswax before. So this is just a little five grams worth of beeswax. Um, so I don't know how to work with it. I don't know how high to heat it up to. Um, I'm not too sure, so this is all new to me. So basically what I'm going to be doing is just putting it in the pitcher and then pouring in the wax. Um, so that way I want to basically have the wax heat it up and melt it down. I don't think I need to do a double boiler method on five grams of beeswax. So I'm just going to basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and put my pitcher on here, tear it off, pour my beeswax in, and then I'm going to tear it again, and then I'm going to pour in 152 grams of this CCS number 12. And I'm hoping that the heat from the wax is going to heat it all the way up. Oh, I need to be careful. Okay, so it definitely looks like it's dissolving, melting down into it. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay, cool, so that's melting down and it's at just shy of 190 degrees right now. So with this wax, you wanna keep it under 200. Um, so they say 170 to 180. I like to do 185 to 190 um, to get it a little bit hotter when I pour in the fragrance oil. So I'm just gonna measure out 13 grams of fragrance oil and pour it on in. This one smells so good. I know that a lot of the reviews on the pumpkin souffle um, is that it's more of like a pumpkin spice and it's not necessarily um, very sweet. And I love that aspect to it because it's just a very true pumpkin spice scent. And I'm so excited for this one. It is just one of my all time favorite scents. Okay, so everything is blended together and I'm just about to pour this. And I actually went and looked on Candle Science 
and they have a white beeswax and I think I'm hoping that it's very similar to the one from California Candle Supply or if all beeswaxes are going to be very similar or the same but it said that the melting point on that one is 144 degrees which is phenomenal so I'm hoping that it's very similar and it's going to help to harden up this wax and I also hope that I didn't totally ruin it by the way that I used it. I don't know, you guys tell me. Beeswax experts, let me know. Okay, candle number two that we are testing, this is going to be the blend, uh, the even blend between the CCS uh, number 12 and the TW30 with a little bit of beeswax. This one is like a total, I have no idea how this is gonna come out because I've tried before of doing a 50-50 blend between the CCS number 12 and the TW30 and it uh, was still very, very soft and had a very um, low melting point. So we are just gonna do 76 grams of each of these. Also, so far, it looks like this 8-quart melter is performing the exact same way as the 6-quart one. Uh, no dripping. As soon as I turn it off, it's off. There might be maybe one drip, but it's not leaking or anything, so I'm really happy with this so far. And at this point, I actually didn't notice, but my phone stopped recording due to storage issues. Fantastic. So um, I basically didn't do anything differently. I just added in the fragrance oil of the cranberry apple marmalade, and then I stirred and poured. So the next scene will be me just uh, making the third candle. I went ahead and put the BW921 on the double boiler. And once that is all melted down, then we can go ahead and add the CCS12 to it because this is the blend where it's essentially going to be like a 50-50 split. Okay, so this has melted all the way down and now we are going to be adding in 79 grams of the CCS number 12. Perfect, okay, there we go. And then with this one, we are gonna be doing the cinnamon vanilla. It's right up here. Oh my gosh, this fragrance oil is dark. Is this supposed to be dark like this? It's like brown. You guys see that? Is this supposed to be like that? I guess we're gonna find out, huh? It would make sense, this is a cinnamon and vanilla. I know that the discoloration can definitely happen. So this is gonna be a true test of the tins because I know that they deal with rusting and I've heard that they don't really perform that well when there's a lot of uh, vanillin in it. I believe that's how it's pronounced. So we'll definitely see how this does. I'm not a huge fan of cinnamon, but I know that a lot of people like that scent. I honestly would probably play around with this scent and add in a little bit of the ice cream parlor to, to it to make it like a, like more of like a spiced cinnamon cake type of scent. I feel like that would add a little bit to it and make it a little bit more sweet. Um, but again, I know that a lot of people like the spicy aspect to it. So I don't know, I might wanna leave it because of that. And I don't have any spicy scents um, in my line. So definitely interested to uh, test this one out. Cool, so um, they're doing some cleaning outside of my apartment. So that means that Brody is going to be going crazy. No! Just like that. So honestly, I should probably um, stop recording because I know that my dog is going to be freaking out soon uh, because of all the noises outside. But I really hope that you guys enjoyed this kind of video so you guys can see um, in the mind of me just throwing out random numbers, throwing out random waxes, mixing things together, and just kind of exploring with you guys as I'm learning. Again, I am not an expert. I feel like I have to say this in every video now because I am not an expert. If I did any of this wrong, please tell me you guys in the comments. If you know beeswax, if you know that this um, new pillar tart wax from Candle Science, why in the heck am I mixing it together for a container candle? Please let me know in the comment section below. This is all just experimental for me. So I don't uh, really have a rhyme or reason. I kind of do, but um, it's not like to the bulk of what exactly you should be doing. Um, all of this is just kind of in my head and I'm just sharing it with you guys. So that is the whole point of today's video. And just to kind of take you guys along with this journey of figuring out the best way to wick and um, have the best wax for these tens because I can't wait to get these tens up. 
Also, before I end this video, I do want to thank Candle Science as well as Michael from Soylight Candles. Um, I appreciate you guys sending me um, the wax that Candle Science sent me uh, for me to test out as well as Michael sending me this Soylight Melter, um, which is a little bit bigger than the one that I had before. And I absolutely love it. It's performing exactly how this one is. And I'm starting to very much enjoy the spout and not just the ladle that I've been using. So uh, we may have to install a spout on that one um, sooner than later, um, but I'm really happy to have this bigger melter and to have another kind of container wax I can put in it. Um, so I think I'm gonna have more of a melter collection um, soon. So I might end up with like 10 of these at one point, who knows. Um, but I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys. <laughs> oh, just in time for me to end the video. Good job. You waited. You waited for me to be done. Oh, didn't you? I know. Now you get attention. Now you're gonna get attention. Uh-huh.